Good evening, and this is the August 24th, 2015 meeting of the Auburn Board of Selectmen. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Is there anybody else in the audience tonight recording this meeting? Seeing none, can we rise and salute the flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for the whole city, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. First on the agenda, we don't have any public comments, but I do want to make a reminder to uh, the public that Wednesday, August 26th, that's this Wednesday at the Auburn High School from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, National Grid will be there, and uh, some of the uh, <coughs> discussion that's going to be is understanding your utility bill, energy efficiency programs and tips, how we respond to power outages, power outages energy safety, and many more things. So uh, from 6 to 8 o'clock Wednesday night at the Auburn High School, there will be National Grid there to answer your questions uh, for uh, energy. Thank you. And next we have on the agenda, presentation of proclamations to the Auburn High School varsity baseball team and varsity softball team. Would you please come up, come forward. Would you come up and sit at the table for us, please? <coughs> Thank you. Would you introduce yourselves and just tell us a little bit about where we've gone with the, the teams this year? Okay, uh, my name is Katie Senior and I'm the Auburn softball coach for the varsity program and um, I've been, this will be coming on to my fifth year as the head coach. Um, in the last few years we've done a lot to build the program. Um, Auburn Little League is now um, having a girls program which is awesome. It's really um, helping the youths and making a better future come for softball. Um, we have winter clinics, um, you know, we work a lot with the baseball team and overall I'm just thrilled because I have such a wonderful group of young girls. They're all very smart AP students and they get along great and I'm just thrilled that you know I get to be part of their lives every day. It's really great and I'm a teacher there too so. Great and the season and the, the school year begins very shortly does it yes, not? Yes. <laughs> we start it all over again. We start in the spring so they have they're all playing three sports. Most of them are tonight at a field hockey clinic. They're very committed to everything that they do um, along with their schoolwork so um, and you know we've been successful as well. I, I forgot to mention that we've um, made it to the district semifinals last year and we're going, going strong and I think we'll have a, a very um, successful future in the next few years. Oh, hopefully that's great. further than that. That's great. Keep them all going and just that's a winning team. That's a winning that's great. And for you, please. Yeah, uh, Eric Swedberg, I'm the, the head baseball coach. Uh, this is uh, will be my 12th year going into it uh, this spring. Um, you know, again, very proud with what we do with Little League. Uh, work very closely with Dave Nordman, uh, and uh, he's a good friend of mine. And, uh, and I think the numbers are as high as they've ever been. And uh, we work, we have a number of youth clinics, and we work very closely with, with the youth. Um, you know, I think that we do things right, and you know, the byproduct of that is winning. And so, um, you know, we've had some good seasons. Uh, we had a good season this year as well. And uh, you know, again, uh, just just enjoying it. We have we have a lot of fun. So that's the key. We have to kick the guys off the field after practice, basically. <laughs> so I think that's that's what uh, what it's all about. So I think that's a very very important note yeah. that you made that they yeah. enjoy it. It is. They, it's a winning season. That's a great thing. But when they enjoy right. it, that adds a lot to yep. it. That's Yep. Great. Has anybody from the board got anything in comments, sir? Mr. Simone? Yeah, so I, I'll just, <clears throat> I've been around um, a lot of those kids for a number of years, especially some of the girls, and um, it's great to see them continue to succeed at the level that they're at. And I've known most of them since, uh, well, let's just say for a few years, because <laughs> it just makes me feel older every year. Um, it's fantastic. I know you guys had a great season as well. I, a lot of the parents uh, also. Uh, I unfortunately couldn't make it out to the game against Mount Greylock. I, I heard That's you guys fine. ran into a buzzsaw, yeah, but yeah, they still were had a phenomenal right. season. Yeah. You know, and uh, from talking to some of the kids, they, you know, it wasn't it wasn't for a lack of effort. They, yeah. they put everything they had in, in both cases. So, I mean, it's just great to see after all these years, to all all those kids I, I watched. <laughs> You know, 
learned the basics so many years ago, now succeeding. So great job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you. I too want to just congratulate you. You know, we've had several teams come in, and, and um, we hear the same message over and over again that that these teams are working well together, and that they have respect for each other, and that's so key in you know your formative years in high school. And it's you know thanks to your leadership and your guidance that um, you know we 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 teach kids respect and teamwork. And so congratulations on a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Does anybody got anything else? Okay, now I have a couple of proclamations, one for each of you. Great. <laughs> So from the Town of Auburn Board of Selectmen, whereas the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Auburn wishes to recognize the outstanding achievement of Auburn's youth, and whereas athletic excellence through hard work and perseverance is a worthy effort to acknowledge and for all to emulate, and whereas the Auburn High School varsity baseball team has performed at a high level of excellence during the 2015 season, and whereas the Auburn High School varsity baseball Baseball team has achieved honor for their for their school as Central Massachusetts di district champions. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Auburn, Massachusetts, hereby acknowledge Auburn High School varsity baseball team and congratulate them on behalf of the proud citizens of their hometown, Auburn, Massachusetts. It's signed by Chairman Holstrom, signed by myself, Vice Chairman Doreen Goodrich, Selectman Stephen Simonian, Selectman Denise Brotherton, and Selectman Dan. Daniel Carpenter. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, from the Town of Auburn Board of Selectmen, proclamation, whereas the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Auburn wishes to recognize the outstanding achievements of Auburn's youth, and whereas excellent, athletic excellence through hard work and perseverance is a worthy effort to acknowledge and for all to emulate, whereas the Auburn High School varsity softball team has performed at a high competitive level during the 2015 season, and whereas the Auburn High School varsity softball team earned the honor of competing in the 2015 district playoffs advancing to the semi-final round of play. Now therefore we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Auburn, Massachusetts, hereby congratulates the Auburn High School varsity softball team for their successful 2015 season. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations on a great season and a successful season coming forward. And again, it's uh, great that the kids are out there, they're uh, enjoying what they're doing, and it's, uh, it is, like Mrs. Goodrich said, it's teaching them a lot. So thank and you. we have you to thank for those, and please pass along our congratulations to the we team will. members. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much you. for very being much. here tonight. Have a good night. Hopefully less snow this year. <laughs> <laughs> And now I'd like to invite Mr. Robert Grossman up to the microphone and give us a report on the School Buildings Committee. Welcome, Bob. Thank you. I'm going to break the report into three parts. First will be the project update. The new Auburn Middle School reached its substantial completion on July 7th of 2015. The project remains under budget and is ready for the school to reopen this fall season. The building is operating on a 60-day temporary certificate of occupancy and the final certificate is expected to be issued by the end of August. And as you know, school starts first week of August. The building exterior and site work. Site work is around 95% complete. All of the specified site plantings have been planted and are being watered regularly. Hardscapes are 100% complete. Site lighting is 100% complete. All finished paving is complete. The turf athletic field is 100% complete. 
sod and hydro seeded areas are being monitored by this site contractor to ensure growth. The building interior. Work inside the building is 98 cent complete. Fontaine Brothers is currently working on minor incomplete work listed in the designer's punch list. The commissioning continues to test the commission's MEP systems. The building's data work is up and running. The elevator passed inspection and furniture deliveries are nearly complete. And I'd like to also let everyone know if they haven't read it in the paper already, that this Saturday at 10 a.m. there'll be a ribbon cutting ceremony for the new school and there'll be a tour for anyone who wishes to go through the school and see the new school. That's Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Great. Thank you. Bob, thank you very much. You've uh, been a big help to us and to the public also, keeping us up to date on what the school is going on. And uh, for 10 o'clock on Saturday, it's going to be definitely a, a program to see, to uh, see the new school and see what the taxpayers are actually getting and what the kids are going to be looking forward to. And again, Bob, thank you very much for your time and your efforts coming to us to uh, give us the updates. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have a open hearing for 7.05. Uh, the um, hearing was continued from our last meeting. Is there anybody from National Grid here tonight? Would you please come forward? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to uh, reopen the hearing. Second. Motion been made to uh, reopen the hearing. And a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those, thank you. Thank you. Would you uh, introduce yourself and uh, give us a little bit of background on uh, what your program, what your uh, project is? Yep. Um, I'm DJ Alberti. I'm an engineer over at National Grid. Uh, this proposal is for a one new pole um, in the public way for a new customer at 128 Prospect Street. Um, I went out there, I did a field visit, and there was no other way to serve this customer power without setting this one pole. Um, it's coming off of an existing pole 34-1, about 100 feet up towards Prospect Street in line um, along the way. Uh, it's no primary voltage on it, just secondary voltage, 100 feet going into right the house. Um, and then there's a back anchor just to support the tension of the wire. Okay, so this is not for a uh, housing project or anything up there. This is for to service a single house Correct. in the area. Correct. Okay. Yep. Has anybody got any questions or comments? Is there anybody from the area, from the neighborhood, have any questions or comments? Okay. Um, Mr. If Chairman, you, I make a motion to close the hearing. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, so the hearing is closed. Now we'll entertain a motion for uh, the, uh, the poll um, position. I make a motion that we um, approve the poll location as requested. Second. The motion been made and seconded to, uh, for the poll location. Is there any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And thank you very much for coming in tonight. Thank you, guys. <laughs> And next on the agenda, we have a motor vehicle class two license application for Electra Auto Sales, 115 Washington Street. Is there anybody here? Would you come forward, please? Motion open the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Would you come up and sit down? Would you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're uh, going to be doing there? Hi, my name is Anthony Corsi. I'm the owner of Electro Auto Sales and Service in Providence, Rhode Island. And there's a piece of property on Washington Street that I noticed was for lease, and I would like to lease it if I have your permission. So you haven't got any business in there yet or plan to put any business in there? This is for plan on. to lease the property? Yeah, I would like to lease the property to open up another location for Electro Auto Sales in Massachusetts. Okay. And what is the business going to be that's going to be located there? Auto Sales. Okay. And right now, what I have here... Um, 
It's listed as an office trailer on a paved lot and it's going to fit about 20 cars. That's right. And will there be any repairs? No. Uh, there will be oil changes and... Not on site. There no. will not be anything on site. This will be strictly automobile sales. Yes. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? This is Goodrich. Um, are you familiar with the conditions that are recommended by the DCG? No, I am not. Okay. So, so this is um, a location that we've had pr previous requests for. There was a previous auto dealership. Yeah. So, so the um, DCG has looked at the previous conditions. So the conditions that they are recommending are no loading or unloading of cars within the state highway layout. All loading and unloading must be done on the applicant's property. So you can't pull up on that section of Route 20 to unload anything. Okay. All vehicles are to be parked on paved services and arranged per the site plan. Do you have a copy of that, the yes, site I, plan? Yes, well, not with me, but I do have a copy. But you're familiar with it. And this it shall include all customer and employee vehicles. Okay. The business owner shall apply for a permit for any proposed sign alterations, including sign refacing. Okay. There is to be no outdoor repair on the property. The applicant shall obtain any necessary building permits for the tenant fit out of the property. And the applicant shall pr obtain any necessary board of, permit, board of health permits if any food or beverages are to be provided for the patrons. Even if you provide, you know, free coffee and donuts, you have to go through the board of health for a permit. Okay. Okay. So you understand all I those conditions? I do understand. That's fine. Okay. Um, just so I go back here, uh, the DCG, the Development Coordinating Group, uh, they usually have a meeting with individuals for a certain piece of property. Have you met with them? No, I have not. You have not met this with them? This is the first meeting yeah. that I was told that I had to come to. Okay. Okay, so I just want to be sure that, and Mrs. Goodrich, thank you for that. I just want to be sure that you were aware of these DCG requirements for yeah. uh, the business down there. Is there any for Mr. Simonian? Um, I have a question regarding the, the drawing that's in here. Mm -hmm. Because on page two it says fits about 20 cars, and I see spaces numbered 1 through 11, and I see 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I don't see a 14 or a 20. So. And then you have customer two two customer parking spaces. So I'm I'm just it seems like there's two. You're missing two spaces on the drawing. Um, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't uh, make uh, draft this drawing. It was provided me provided to me from uh, Pat, which is in the other building. And um, she said, well, this might be some, of some help to you. And by looking at it, I mean, I was on the property and it looks very accurate. I just assumed, she said, just change the number and uh, you should be okay. Right, I, I'm just saying, this is, this is showing 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18 spaces. So okay. it's too shy of the 20, I'm just. I mean, if, if honestly, if it was permitted for 15 cars, I'm satisfied with that, if that would be, make a difference. I don't, really don't need 20, to be honest with you, as long as I had the front row. It's fine. I'm, I just noticed the discrepancy, oh, thank you. so thank I wanted to understand why. Thank you for my attention. Um, Mr. Benoit, Matt Benoit, he's in the audience. Is there uh, any light you can shed on this for um, some of the questions being asked here tonight regarding the uh, 115 uh, Washington Street property? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Matthew Benoit, Town Planner. Uh, this item had been before DCG twice previously, same plan, same conditions. Neither instance work, worked out for that auto dealer. So now a third dealer's here today. Instead of bringing them to DCG, we transferred the same conditions as the plan had not changed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Al, I'm sorry. Um, can you address the parking discrepancy the uh, what Mr. Simone had mentioned tonight? Yes, sir. I also see 18 spaces. Okay. 
so it says it fits about 20 cars, so it's um, an estimated number of cars. I don't think we have to have a, uh, an exact number on there. Um, there's no plans to be anything more than what you have spaces for? No, absolutely okay. not. There's really not. It has to be comfortable. All right. Um, well, we have, you have 18 spaces noted. Um, maybe I think for our, for our um, application, there should be noted as 18, so we don't have any question about discrepancy about that's, the numbers or not. Uh, is there any question or comment on that? Thanks. Okay, I think then what we'll do is we'll change that and make it for uh, to fit 18 cars. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, not a problem. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I have no um, no problem approving this. I just think um, that it would be best if we have a clean copy with the um, the the plan a little clearer filed with the license. And I'm I guess I'm looking at Mr. Benoit and addressing that if we could have a better plan that identifies the spaces better. We'll put the, con uh, if, if the vote goes through, we'll approve the 18 spots, but just to have a better copy, um, more legible copy to file with the actual license. Through the chair, I agree. I have the same copy that you do. It's, um, so we can I, I believe it would be proper to request that from the applicant. Thank you. Right. Mr. Corsi, have you got any questions on that? Uh, regarding the the redraft, I would want me to do that for you. Is that what you're, you're requiring? Work with the uh, through the chair. I would ask that you work with the town planner just to have so that there's a clean copy. This is what they've approved, but yeah. we just need the the spots, um, exactly you know, spots. identified okay. a, li a little more clearly, and then we'll file that copy with the license approving, assuming the, the board or with the, you know, if the board votes to approve your license tonight. Are there any other questions or comments? Are there any uh, abutters here tonight for questions? And Mr. Corsi, have you got anything else? No, I'm just, do um, you have any suggestions on how you want me to clean this up for you? Uh, work through the chair, work with the town planner, and they'll, they'll assist okay. you with that. All right. They'll assist you with that. <laughs> if there's no, nothing else, I, I we'll look. No motion to close the hearing. Second. Okay, motion to made and second to close the hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion that we approve the license providing that provided that all applicable requirements of the state and town and any of its departments, boards, and commissions have been fulfilled. Said license is subject to all of the conditions stated upon it. Failure to comply with any of all the con any and all the conditions shall invalidate the license and render it null and void and with the conditions of the DCG to be placed on the license including an updated parking plan to um, include no more than 18 spaces. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. And Sharon, have you got that? Yes. Okay, thank you. So the motion has been made and seconded. Any further comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much and good luck. Good luck. Okay. Under 3E, we have a change of manager, the 99 Restaurants of Boston, LLC, at 793 Southbridge Street. Is, do introduce yourself, please. Sure. Uh, Dave Connolly. And this is just to change the management of the 99 restaurant for 793 Southbridge Street. Yes, yeah, so I'm the new general manager. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to open the hearing since the applicant is here. Okay. Second. Motion been made and second to open the hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. So it's just this is just uh, strictly a change of management. There's no change in the operation. Uh, you've been through the ABC and you're all TIP certified out there so that uh, the program right. remains the same. Right, I was actually the general manager five years ago. Okay. This location too, so. Has anybody got anything else? Yes, Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just ask um, that 
you um, familiarize yourself with the conditions of the license. We've, you know, recently done a thorough review of all our policies and licenses. So I just would ask that you um, you, up, you familiarize yourself with the conditions of your license okay, through the absolutely. town. Yep. That's all. That's all, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Have you got anything else? No, I'm okay. good. Um, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the change of manager to David Connolly at the 99 restaurant. Is there a second? Second. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Like Thank you for position. coming. Thank you. Okay. Uh, under 3F, we have a new officer, director, Pepper Dining Incorporated. I'm doing business as Chili's Grill and Bar 820 South Street. Is there anybody here? Would you come up and introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Michael Patty. We're representing Chili's. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, with the applicant here, I make a motion that we open the hearing. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, you are uh, just a new officer director, so this is a position change. Yes. Um, what happened was Brinker International, who was our parent company, ended up buying Pepper Dining. But I have a copy of the uh, structure here if you'd like to see it. Okay. Well, basically what they did was they, they bought Pepper Dining, still operating as Pepper Dining, instead of, probably the best way of putting it, they didn't merge, they just bought and still operated under that. So with the liquor license, it wasn't looking for a change of ownership. It was just actually just still under Pepper Dining. All right. Is anybody on the board got questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I'll just note that this is pr really just a housekeeping matter when we change um, officers and it's already gone through the BC ABCC and there's multiple locations that need approval. This is just kind of a formality through the board. Thank you. So if there's nothing else, uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the new officer director of the motion. location. Motion been made? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much for coming in. All right, thank you. We have no communications tonight. And now we have the Board of Selectmen general items. And the first we have under 5A is approval of votes on bond and note award and sign the notes. Uh, enclosed is a summary of the bid results for the bond issue. And uh, I'll turn this over to uh, Ms. Jacobson, um, please. Mr. Chairman, would you want to also move up item 6A and then it's related to this item, you could take them together. Make a motion. I'll make a motion to move up item 6A, a report on the bond rating results. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. This will give us a chance to talk about the bond rating that we got, and then we can lead into the bonds and the, the bands. Uh, and Eddie and I are, are both going to talk about this. So first of all, I just want to uh, generally give you some information, and then Ed's going to give you some specifics. But we're so excited to say that uh, Moody's Investor Service has upgraded the town to a double A2. This really is great news. We've been working on this for five years. Uh, it's been steady and strategic financial planning that's gotten us there. And it's going to talk about some of the specifics of that. Standard & Poor's reaffirmed our rating of AA+, which is uh, the second highest rating you can get from Standard & Poor's. Both rating agencies referenced a couple of uh, things that we just want to point out, multi-year trends and adhering to our financial policies, strong financial management, increasing our level of reserves, increasing our fund balance, addressing pension and health liabilities, all of which Ed can talk about. So. I just want to make sure that I thank the entire management team, especially uh, CFO and Assistant Tom Andra Ed Kazanovich. 
his team, as well as all the department heads who participated in this, uh, from planning to DPW to treasurer assessing. Everybody has been involved in this process. Again, not just through the bond rating process, but multi a multi-year plan for all the department heads to really follow those financial policies, adhere to the strategy for budgeting, and adhere to our capital uh, improvement plan. So it really is a team effort, uh, and it's just, you know, we're, we are thrilled. And we want to thank the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, and town meeting members, because all of you have supported town administration and our recommendations over the years, and that confidence has translated to really excellent and strong ratings from the bond rating company. So I'm going to turn to Ed. He can explain the details of that and then go into the item for which we're here tonight on the signing. Uh, thank you, Julie. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, and to the viewing public, uh, once again, I, I want to state that this is good news, and uh, it benefits all the taxpayers of this community because, quite honestly, uh, we're recognizing uh, savings as a result of this bond issue as well as future bond issues that may, may be considered for helping to fund our, our capital needs. I'd like to actually break this out into two pieces because we actually... The whole process really started back in June um, when we had to start compiling information to put together our official statement that is really reviewed by um, any potential bidders who are in the market to buy tax exempt bonds. I can truly say it's a lot of work. Uh, it was truly a team effort. A uh, number of hours were dedicated to this project, uh, and it all came really to a head when we had our rating review in, on August 6th. Uh, we actually spent about four and a half hours in the planning board room uh, preparing uh, for that. Uh, we had a number of conference calls with both Standard & Poor's and Moody's. Um, after the conclusion of the rating review, uh, the analysts do take uh, what we discuss and they bring it to a full committee who then decides on our rating. Uh, and a number of things come into play, not only the, the results of the rating on August 6th, but they look at the history and the um, policies and, and uh, budgeting techniques over the past five years. This is really a five-year project. Um, so uh, we received news from Moody's on August 11th. We, this is a, a two-component rating review. We actually went to market for $5,142,235 of banned bond anticipation notes. We received for that short-term obligation a rating of a MIG-1 by Moody's and an SP-plus by Standard & Poor's. Um, and I'm just going to read the definition of a MIG-1 by Moody's and the SP rating by Standard & Poor's. Uh, the MIG-1 MIG rating is the highest rating for short-term obligation. And the definition of a MIG-1 is this designation denotes superior credit quality Excellent protection is afforded by established cash flows, highly reliable liquidity support, or demonstra demonstrated broad-based access to the market for refinancing. Along with that, we, for Moody's, we received a AA2. Uh, that is an upgrade from our old rating of AA3. Um, in the summary, summary rationale by Moody's in order to assign us a AA2, they state the upgrade to AA2 reflects an improving financial position bolstered by strong financial management. The rating also incorporates a moderately sized tax base with a commercial presence above average, but manageable debt burden, as well as an average pension liability. Some of the key points in their support of, of Auburn's AA2. Uh, they they uh, highlight strong financial management continues to result in improving financial position. Fiscal 2015 is projected to reflect an operating surplus of 1.2 million, which will further increase the available general fund balance to around a ratio of 20% of operating revenues. Year over year surplus, surplus surpluses have resulted in, in a significant financial improvement over the past four years. 
Moody's also states that Auburn's financial position has improved over the last five years, largely attributable to strengthened financial policies uh, and management. Fiscal 2014 audited financials represented the fifth consecutive year of surplus operations that have increased the available fund balance to roughly 10.3 million, or 17.3 percent of, of revenues, from point from 4.8 million or 8.8 percent of revenues for fiscal year that ended June 30th of 2011. They state the surpluses are driven by conservative budgeting and multi-year savings from a health, ins health insurance overall, while at the same time increasing the unused levy capacity to 3.5 million at the end of fiscal 2016. The town's primary, primary revenue sources is property tax, property taxes representing about 59% 59, 59 of 2014 revenues. Standard & Poor's is a town manager has indicated has reaffirmed that AA plus rating. That's one from the top possible rating that a community can score. On the short term issue, short term obligations, we were issued a SP-1 plus. For our short term rating reflects our view that the town maintains a very strong capacity to pay principal and interest when the notes come due. Auburn has a low market risk profile because of its, because of its strong legal authority to issue long-term debt to take out other notes. In addition, it is a frequent issuer that regularly provides disclosure to market participants. The strong points highlighted by S&P is, is basically a, a repeat of what uh, Moody has identified in their report. As a result of that, to put this in perspective, um, we talked to a financial analyst who believes that Auburn, on a conservative estimate, saved about 10 basis points as a result of our bond rating upgrade. Um, if we were to look at strictly the Auburn Middle School project, if all of the debt was rated at an A2, and I can tell you a portion of the Auburn Middle School debt in this issue was $5 million. That savings over a 20-year period just for the $5 million is $105,000. It's about $21,000 per $1 million of value. For the total project, if that were to be rated at an AA2, in a portion of that we bonded last year at $13.6 million at a AA3. The total savings for that entire project over a 20-year period is about $495,000. So we're talking about significant savings for that one project alone. This not only impacts the school project, but also impact, impacts projects in borrowing such as South Hold Road, as well as our other CIP. So the estimated savings just on this one issue alone is about $200,000 when you combine a 20-year issue and a 10-year issue for the other capital. Those are real dollar savings that's passed along to the taxpayers of this community. So that's good news, and we are hopeful that we will continue that rating and continue to see that savings in future borrowings uh, in, the, in the future. In terms of um, this bond issue, I'm going to break this out into two pieces because the board has to sign a note for the $5.1 million as well as about 20 notes for the bond issue representing $12.1, a little over $12 million. The results of the ban, $5.1 million, um, the award went to... And, and these were sold on August 19th. Uh, the award went to uh, Janney, J-A-N-N-E-Y, out of Pennsylvania, um, with a net interest cost of 0 0.379. So when you take the interest cost of roughly 1%, offset the premium against it, the net interest cost is 0 0.379, and the high was Jeffries at 0 0.58. So they're pretty clustered, it's tight. We did receive five bids, 
with the low being Janney at 0.379 and the high being 0.589. And you can see the anchor and say, I'm part of your packet for the other bit is that uh, bit on this, on this note. On the long-term bond issue, 20-year purpose, with a lot of debt being retired in the first 10 years, um, because some of the debt only qualifies for a 10-year purpose. Just give me a minute here. once again was Janie Montgomery at a true interest cost and this takes into consideration a forced premium for Janie at $942,494.58. Uh, the true interest cost was 2.52 with a high of 2.64. Now, I just want to tell the board that the premium on the short term issue as well as the premium on the bond issue has to be reserved and set aside as an offset to what we have to raise over a 20 year period. So we apply roughly 1 20th of that every year uh, to the amount that we have to raise. Uh, so we set in reserve. We do have to get approval by DOR to establish what they call a debt exclusion dash one. That amount was approved by DOR, and every year we take a portion of that and apply it towards a debt and interest payment. Once we offset all the issuance costs against that premium as well. Uh, so that cost has yet to be determined. Those invoices are coming in, but there'll be a substantial amount set aside as an offset for the payment of that debt over the next 20 years. Um, one other thing I'd like to say is, um, even though we borrowed 13.6 million last year at a double A three, uh, we will have an opportunity probably somewhere between year eight and year 10 to, uh, there's a callable portion on those bonds. We may be able to refinance those at a lower rate, given the fact that we're at a double A two, if we're in that same standing at that point in time, which will hopefully generate additional savings down the road towards that project as well. So those notes are available. The town clerk is here to witness your signature. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time if the board should have any. First off, I'd like to make a comment that um, I sat through the conference calls for Moody's and Standard and & Poor's and was given information ahead of time of uh, what was actually gone through. It was quite a document. Um, not being a financier myself and uh, not understanding the complete package, I did find that um, the discussion between Standard & Poor's and Moody's was significant. and. Um, they really dug into information that the town uh, was uh, supposed to give to them. Um, there was a lot of questions asked, a lot of done work done ahead of time, and there was a lot of work done ahead of time. And uh, it, during the conference calls, there was a lot of questions asked and um, by Standard Poor's and Moody's, and all those questions were answered. Uh, they were very impressed. Um, Moody's, evidently, from uh, the past with the conference calls they had, was a little bit more difficult. And uh, But I don't find that either one of them were less difficult or, or less easy. They were both very, very difficult to go through with all the information that was posed to the town. And the uh, answers were given to them. And um, this is the result of what we've got. And our uh, ratings have been improved um, and it's also by uh, this board that we've uh, given the town administration the policies they need to uh, keep our financial uh, status positive and on that note I would like to just again say thank you very much for all your hard work your time your energy uh, it has shown and uh, the town benefits thank you has anybody else got anything else okay I guess we'll sign some notes then do we need the motion, Mr. Chairman? Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the votes for the bond issue as presented in our packet. Second. Is there a second? Okay, motion bit of Is there any uh, questions or comments? Hold on a minute. Um, 
for the chair, just do you want to have someone actually read this entire thing, or do you want to say as written and attached? I said as. Are you, oh, as here. I'm sorry. As as presented in our packet it was my my yeah. motion. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay, so the motion been made and seconded. Is there any further discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No, that's okay. Thank you. So that's the end of which that, one? That was the end of the bonds. This is, this the, is the end of the bonds. Okay. Now, yes. now we're getting just to the um, the signature, the no lit litigation and push this open. Okay. okay. And there's one for the bonds. Is this still bond? Yep. One for each. It ends so there's four copies of each of these. Okay. So I'm just going to hold off on that one to pass it down. Okay.
this is for the ban, the um, official statement certificate okay. in the litigation. That's the start of a new pack, pack of the tax certificate. Okay. to our town manager, Julie Jacobson, our CFO and assistant town manager, Ed Kasanovich, their administration, and all the department heads for putting this together and making this happen. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll wait for them to come back into the room, and we'll begin on... Why don't we take a uh, five-minute recess? Motion to for a brief recess. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. To order. 
Okay, uh, next we have on the agenda is item 5B, a request to begin street acceptance process for Paul Revere Road. Um, yes, Mr. Coyle, will you come forward, please? And Mr. Benoit is coming up to you. Mr. Benoit, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, this is the first step in the acceptance process for Paul Revere Road. Um, the roadway construction is complete at this point. Uh, with the request of the board, and typically you would defer that to the planning board, and then the engineer's office would develop a punch list. I can tell you that we've reviewed the project already, and that we find that the contractor did an excellent job on this particular road. So I don't anticipate uh, a lot of problems uh, with any potential punch list items that we may have. The existing roadway is Paul Revere Road. The developer was Bill George. Roadway is 800 feet long off of uh, Bonds Street and consisted of eight lots. And we'd also, I think, uh, would establish a date for the, the layout hearing as well. Is there any questions or comments? I know that I, uh, I have taken a ride over there, and uh, there are 11, 12 houses down there, one in the far back corner. Are there any more houses going back up in there? All the houses have been constructed, so there's, uh, there were two lots on the corner, which I believe their frontage may have been on bonds, okay. and then the additional eight lots, so I think it's a total of 10 houses, but all the lots, all the houses have been constructed. I think they're all occupied, so I, I don't believe there's any further uh, residential construction either at this point. Okay, just as an aside and for down the road, um, how much of a um, uh, how much more work is there going to be for accepting this road and doing the uh, you know the road work with the plowing the sanding what have you up there? Well, this this road will be added to one of our plow routes, so it's just a matter of time now that that particular plow route. We have two people, one large truck, one smaller truck. Uh, we would probably send a smaller truck down in that street, so you know it adds. 800 feet of roadway that has to be plowed uh, to the roadway, to the list of roads that we do. Uh, not uncommon, as, as time goes on, we've added streets, Camden Drive has, has been added, and obviously Potter's Farm years ago, which that one is very large. We actually assigned a pickup truck to that, that neighborhood typically. So uh, each one of these roads that we accept adds not only time for plowing, but then sweeping in the spring and um, crack sealing that we've started to do on some of the newer roads and that we're working on. So everything that we accept and build, whether they're parks or roadways, adds more and more work to DPW. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There. Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so is the expectation that this be on the um, fall town meeting warrant for acceptance? I, I believe that is the expectation. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't ultimately get accepted, at least from an engineering standpoint. I, I don't anticipate any problems with it. Okay, so so this timeline of referring it, if we refer it to the planning board tonight for the art review and um, town engineer for review and then set the street layout here for Monday, September 14th, that's, you know, adequate time for comments as well as holding the hearing and getting it to town meeting? Uh, it's adequate timing for the layout hearing. As far as the ultimate, any punch list items, uh, typically if, and again, I don't expect there to be many on this roadway, but typically as long as all items have been addressed prior to town meeting, uh, we have gone to town meeting with recommendation to accept the, the roadway. And I know typically the board defers to the petitioner on that. So normally we don't, come into the layout hearing with everything completely um, addressed. Although in this particular case, I think there's a good possibility we will. But in, in past, we've found that we're still working with any loose items that they haven't completed, whether it's mowing the detention pond. Again, I don't anticipate anything major with this project. We've already reviewed it, so. Great. Thank you. That's and certainly, I defer through the chair. I ask Matt, Matt, Mr. Benoit has anything to add? Certainly. Sure. If the board were to uh, set the date for the layout hearing on the was it the 14th? The planning board, the next planning board meeting to discuss this is on September 8th, so that gives time in advance for the layout hearing for review. To get to have comments and then have them forwarded to the board by. Yes. Packets for that Thursday, I believe. Okay, great, thanks. Any other questions, mm -hmm. comments? 
Okay, we have two votes in front of us tonight. One to refer the request and lay out plan to the planning board for comments and to the town engineer for review. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we um, refer the request and lay out plan to the planning board for comments and to the town engineer for review. Second. Second. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, I make a vote. I, I make a motion that we vote to set a street layout hearing for Monday, September 14th, 2015, for Paul Revere Road. Is there a second? Second. Are there any questions or comments? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. And thank you both thank you very, very much. much. Okay. Under gift acceptances from Robert and June Contois for $100 donation towards the animal animal care. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept with gratitude. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. We have no request for proclamations. Um, under 5E, discussion on request from the planning board to, for remote participation, video conferencing recommendation. And in your packets, you've had uh, a memorandum from Mr. Benoit, dated August 18th of this year. Does anybody got any questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Chairman. Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you. I'll just point out that um, back on December 19th, 2011, um, the Board of Selectmen did take a vote when this first came about to not adopt um, remote participation rules. Okay. Uh, we just received this information. I, I, I don't believe that there was information in our packet for a vote, just a discussion, so. Okay. And if there's uh, no discussion, we'll move on because this board has taken a vote at uh, previous meeting, which I was not in. Mr. Simonian. So, based on the previous vote, this this can't be considered. Well, it can, it uh, can be. We have, it, I'll make a motion to reconsider the vote to to not adopt remote participation then. Okay, motion's been made to reconsider the vote. Is there a second? Second. So, um, motion's been made and seconded for reconsideration of the vote. Um, is there any discussion? Mrs. Goodrich. Mr. Chairman, it just would have to be a new vote. You can't vote to reconsider a vote that was taken in 2011. It would be a, a whole new vote to to. Anyone who voted in favor of that vote can make a motion to reconsider. It, the time frame has lapsed according to Robert's Rules of Order. I, I don't remember seeing anything about a time frame in Robert's Rules. I haven't got that with me either. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sorry. That, that, that's address. okay. The, yes, Mrs. Goodrich. It, it, it's just the way the motion is, is worded. I mean, if, if we want to take action, it, uh, the, the agenda said discussion, so I would ask that we put it on the, on the, uh, next agenda for a vote, but but it can't be a mo motion to reconsider. It should just be a whole new motion that this board takes. I would agree with that. Uh, we have some information in front of us, and uh, it's up for discussion tonight, and I don't think it's anything we want to vote on tonight, but it's up for discussion, and we can put it on at a, uh, a future meeting. Oh, hold on a second. This doesn't make any sense. I just asked the question, does the previous vote preclude us from having a discussion? And the answer was yes. So I made a motion to reconsider that vote, and it was seconded. So because everything that the planning board has presented to us makes sense to me. What happened a couple of years ago was under different circumstances as far as I'm concerned. There were, there were issues with the way the remote participation was gonna be done. Uh, some of the technology, but I agree with everything that is here, and I also, um, I, the gentleman who proposed it in the first place, um, 
they have the technology in place. It's something that they want to do, and it certainly makes sense to me that why why would we not want to do this when they're they're finding it hard um, in some cases. I mean, we people talk over and over and over again about you know being able to serve the residents, and if this is something that allows people to get votes of the planning board rather than having to wait ridiculous amounts of time. I don't understand why we wouldn't consider doing it. So there is a motion made and seconded. For reconsideration. Exactly. And um, after thought of that, I don't know if we can reconsider a vote from the past board. I think well, it would have to be a new vote. Unless you can show me board. Robert's rules where it says I do not have Robert's rules oh, with me tonight, too. Then, then you can't say no. Yes, I can say you no. Can. I can. I you can. You can. a motion no. to, to, All right, to recess so you can. Um, we follow Robert's to. rules, not Ken Holstrom's rules. Make a motion that you Thank can. Thank you, Mr. Simonian. Okay, you're welcome. Well, uh, can we have a five minute recess to uh, see if we can look up Robert's rules and uh, find out what's going on? I'll make that motion. motion. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. We're in recess. Okay, so there's a motion on the floor for reconsideration of. The remote policy. Is there any discussion? I'll remove my second. Is there a motion that we can make that will solve this problem tonight to schedule a vote at the next meeting so that we can? Well, this? I think what we've got here, uh, Mr. Commoner, we had this was strictly just discussion on request from the planning board for remote participation. So it was only discussion, and um, there was no plan to vote on this tonight. We were going to discuss it and uh, take it from there and it, uh, there's no discussion. It sounds like it's something we want to just move right on to and uh, make a change or there's a motion on the floor for reconsideration. So um, I'm leaving it up to the board for uh, discussion as we've got it on the agenda for tonight. Um, I'd like to schedule a vote um, at the next meeting, which I, I think we'd be able to do. Second. Okay, so you withdrew your second and we can uh, bring this up at the next meeting. Um, one thing that has come to my attention here though, under uh, state law, um, adoption of the remote participation and uh, remote participation meetings of public bodies is not permitted unless the practice has been adopted as follows. And it goes through and um, the, the, the local public bodies, the chief executive officer has designed Mass General Laws, Chapter 4, Section 7, must authorize or sip, by a simple majority vote to allow remote participation in accordance with the requirements of all these regulations. With that authorization or vote applying to all subsequent meetings of all local public bodies in that municipality so it's not strictly for just the planning board it would be for all boards and committees and uh, something definitely worth considering and I think that should be part of the discussion and um, I would agree thank you for um, uh, pulling your second and uh, we'll leave this up for discussion for our next uh, meeting and uh, we'll put it on for a uh, discussion mrs. Goodrich under discussion of the agenda item um, we may want to consider um, asking other regulatory boards um, because once we take this motion as you just pointed out and I think that was clear on the motion in 2011 it applies to all boards um, so I, th I think that it would be helpful to get we, we've heard from the planning board on their position um, we may want to get here from Zoning Board of Appeals, Conservation, any other regulatory board. Okay, Mr. Simone. I don't understand why that would be relevant. If we take a vote to allow this to be done, we're not forcing anyone to do it. No, but we are, as I have just read here, it allows for all to do it. I, I understand. I, I mastered reading by the fifth grade. I, I get it. I get what you just read to me. I don't need it. Only in bridge point Damn down, please. Why can't you stop interrupting me? Because you, you are ignorant and rude. Wow. You do it every week. Mr. Every week. Mr. Simonian, if you continue, I, have I never will interrupted ask you. you to leave. I have never interrupted you. One more time, and I'm going to ask you, you, you to leave. You can ask me to leave all you want. You are being rude to me every single week. You interrupt me every time I talk. Every single Mr. time Simonian. I talk. I've had it. Thank you, you don't do it to anyone else. Thank you. I'm in the middle of making a point. You interrupt me again. Thank you, Mr. Purposely. Simonian. So I will finish my point. Please finish your point, Mr. Simonian. 
We are not forcing anyone to do their meetings remotely. So I don't see why we have to get the opinion of every other board. If we approve this, they have the option to do it. That's all. So why, it, it's something that the planning board has said will benefit them, will benefit residents. I, I don't get it. It's, it's like we're just trying to delay it, make excuses for not doing it. Um, we're, we're supposed to be up here to help people. So, you know, I, I, I don't see why we have to talk to every other board. It doesn't make any sense. Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If we take a vote to allow every board to participate remotely, I would like to know if, if in fact, one member of a board can just elect to, choose, to um, participate remotely because it was a the vote of the board. And if, you know, for example, if someone on this board you know, once we take the, the vote to allow remote participation, you know, does a member of this board, I'll just stick to our board since we don't want to discuss any others, and, you know, they can just uh, inform you as chair that they'll be participating remotely for the next couple meetings. Mr. I want Cop that clarification. Mr. Carpenter. Well, in, in the material that we're given, it does state specific reasons. You can't just decide today, I don't want to show up, and I'm going to call in and da-da-da-da. Um, to your point, I mean, obviously, if people, other boards want to do, do this, they're going to have to be in a room like the planning board room that allows for it. So there are some rooms, probably the library, um, many other places in town that boards will not be able to participate unless they meet up here. This room I don't think would be suitable. I don't know. Matt, could you shed some light on that? How many spaces in town would, other than the planning board room, would be suitable for this type of participation? Through the chair, I believe we're all aware that this room would not be suitable for that, just based on its current layout. The planning board in row one, it has three TVs. The member who was participating in room of participation would have to be visible to the audience and the members at all times. I'm not familiar with the library room. I haven't been in there yet, but I know the school committee meeting room also does not have that capability. Would, would, the police, would the police station room, the community room, they have potentially have access? I believe it. I believe so. Ms. Jacobson. Uh, through the chair, it, I mean, if the board is going to take a vote to put this on the next uh, agenda for a vote, we can get some more specific information to answer your question. There are requirements under CMR uh, 2910 um, for remote participation, and in some cases it is allowed to participate by telephone, internet, or satellite, so in some cases telephone may be sufficient. Um, I, I believe that there are a, a host of different ways that it, it doesn't necessarily have to be done by video conferencing. Uh, so there may be some limitations to some of the rooms, as uh, Mr. Benoit stated, and to follow up on what you're saying, there may be, but I just soon get that information for you, uh, because we're happy to look into it. That's, we're waiting to see if the board wants to have this discussion, take, take a vote at another meeting, and we can come back and get you that kind of information. It is all in this CMR, and if the board is going to, if the board is going to vote on it, we can put this CMR in your packet for the next meeting, because it does outline the information that's required. Do you, and we can give you copies of it now too and we'll put it in your packet. Great. Mr. Simonian. I, I appreciate the tone once again. Um, the last time we discussed this, I believe that part of the discussion that came from the Attorney General's office was that infrastructure had to be in place, there had to be a vote by the board to do it, or that all the members of that board had to accept um, doing it. it. It couldn't just be someone saying, "Hey, um, I'm going to. I'm not going to show. Not going to be there physically this week. You guys scramble and put together a way for me to um, participate remotely." I don't believe that is the way that it was written. That that is not. I mean, that that would be ridiculous. That that's certainly not the intent of of doing this. Um, so I, I mean. 
and no one, I, I don't think anyone in their right mind expects that they're just going to say, hey, I'm not going to be there. Make sure I'm able to re participate remotely in a couple of days. That doesn't make any sense. So. Did Mrs. Goodrich have a, Mr. Chairman, pardon my speaking out of turn, did Mrs. Goodrich have a motion on the floor? I don't recall. No, there was no motion on the floor now after the second was uh, removed. Okay. So there's no motion on the floor now. If it uh, is in order, I would make a motion that we schedule a vote for the meeting of September 28th to give time for the board to be uh, fully informed of uh, what this will entail and perhaps come up with some draft language for our consideration. So the motion's been made for um, this to revisit this um, on September 28th um, and to schedule a vote for that night and uh, to receive some information prior to that and a draft of some language language on policy language policy okay that would be in order is there a second second Okay, the motion's been made, and um, I want to be sure that Sharon has that. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so the motion's been made and seconded to uh, revisit this on September 28th, uh, get uh, a draft of some uh, information of what, how we want to draft the policy and um, information for us for the 28th. Mr. Benoit, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with the, with your permission, I'd like to hand out copies of this 2910 CMR to the members. Okay, uh, just to support uh, Mr. Carpenter's uh, motion, it is 940 CMR 2910, Section 8. It allows the Board of Selectmen to enact policies, laws, rules, or regulations, things such as how many times a year you can miss a meeting, how many miles away you're allowed to be in order to miss a meeting. Miss a meeting, but to Mrs. Simonian's point, also that has to be made clear to the board members and, namely, administration, well in advance of the meeting. Such policies as that are something I believe the board should consider. Thank you. So the motion been made and seconded for September 28th for information on draft policy. Uh, is there any further discussion, questions, comments? If not, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's a vote. Okay. Under town manager items, um, okay. under 6B, we have discussion and vote on the proposed zoning bylaw amendment regarding the appointment of an associate member to the planning board the Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 9. And basically what we want to do now is to, to get this um, in place so we can send it to the Planning Board for their review and uh, for a required public hearing. Uh, this won't be, um, that's what our plan is for tonight. Through the chair. Um, yes. If I may, Ms. Jacobson. The planning board had approached me uh, several months ago to ask if this was possible, and they've been working with town planner Matt Benoit to see what options we have. We've also worked with town council to try to find a way to get an associate member. There were restrictions. You can't appoint an associate member exactly like we now can but <coughs> appoint a, an alternate ZBA member. As the board knows, uh, that decision came from the AG recently that accepted and approved of our bylaw. It's the same process. Uh, it's a bylaw revision, so a, gen, a, a zoning bylaw revision, so it has to go through the zoning bylaw revision process. So again, as the chair said, this is the first step, uh, but I did want you to know that this initially came from a request from the planning board that does have some issues getting quorums at certain times of year, and they're looking to see if they can get another member. So town council has reviewed this. I don't know if uh, the town planner has anything to add to it. Thank you. Through, uh, through the chair, the planning board actually doesn't have their own section under the administrative bylaw. So we had to c create one similar to the platform used for the Zoning Board of Appeals. So that was the difference between the one we did previously for the ZBA. We were just adding some lines to include the alternate member. This time we had to recreate the, the entire section. So uh, now the planning board looks to have not only the alternate member language, but the administrative language for the functions of the board as well. 
Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter. Uh, can I just ask you a question? This is only for special permit projects or is it site plan as well? Through the chair, this would be for all functions of the board, site plan, special permit, and subdivision. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Goodwood. Make a motion that we forward the proposed bylaw to the planning board for, re for review and for the required public hearing. Second. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Benoit. Okay. Under 6C, vote to apply for and accept funds from the State Executive Office of Elder Affairs for a formula grant for $35,072.89. Ms. Jacobson. Uh, through the Chair, I thank you. I, I do want to point out uh, there was an error made where two numbers were reversed. So the packet that you had on Friday from the uh, Senior Center Director for the formula grant is actually, uh, it, it, we're getting another $810 than what you saw and that total amount. So the total amount is 35,882.89. The revised number is in front of you on the plan that was given to you this evening. Um, so the total amount again, 35,882.89. So if you were to vote for this, the, the vote would reflect that. It's an additional $810. It was two numbers that had been inverted. Uh, so the, the catch was made on the on the typographical error and this is this is the actual formula grant. Uh, just so you know, this is very good news through a lot of lobbying at the state level by Elder Affairs and Council on Aging directors all over the state. They've advocated and actually got the state to agree to pay more in the formula grant. So the formula grant used to allow for $8, $8 per elder. It now allows for $9 per elder. And the town of Auburn's number of elder populations is based on the 2010 federal census. We have 3,987 elders. So uh, that comes to almost an additional $4,000. You know, it's, it's about another $3,800 that we didn't have last year. So uh, the difference in, in this year's grant, in addition to the additional money, uh, we're we're reallocating our funds and the additional dollars to support an outreach worker, another outreach worker. We have a wonderful outreach worker and uh, we want to increase the outreach worker to give more hours. So between the two positions now, we would have a total of 30 hours in outreach work. Uh, each each outreach worker would have 15 hours, so they would each still be part-time. It's the concept of almost job sharing, so if one's not there, the other one can handle it. And this was decided after s several discussions with the Council on Aging, uh, as well as the current director and the prior director, who had also pointed out to us that it really should be time to look at changing how we allocate the dollars. So we feel that outreach workers are really critical. We're looking at different programs now to see what types of outreach programs we could implement if we had the extra capacity to do that. So we're thrilled with the extra money. This allows us to do that. Again, this is a formula grant. It comes from the state. The applications are due and they provide uh, the dollar amount to us. Uh, this isn't anything that we determine. And this is in addition to uh, the total of FY, uh, our FY16 budget right now, non-grant related, not formula grant, is 137725 So clearly this really helps support the entire senior center operations. And I have to say that in addition to what you see here, other programs are absolutely offered at the senior center, either through tax levy dollars in our own budget <coughs> or through the friends of the FASCA, friends of the Auburn Senior Center. So we are able to do additional programs. So this is um, similar to what we've done in the past, but again, trying to shift our focus and put our resources more toward outreach. Uh, one other note, the uh, $500 of the 810 that was not on your original one on Friday because you have an updated one, uh, we were able to put back money, $500 back into printing and copying for non-newsletter. The reason being that if we're enhancing our outreach efforts, we hope to have more ma mailings and packets and that cost of mailing those packets will go up. So we needed to add a little bit of uh, dollars to that postage cost. Thank you. 
Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion that we vote to apply for and accept funds from the Executive Office of Elder Affairs for a formula grant in the amount of $35,882.89. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Questions? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's a vote. Thank you. Thank you. We have no tabled items for tonight. Board of Selectmen member items. Uh, Mr. Carpenter, a request for proclamation for Susan Weagle. Yeah, this was something that was a couple meetings ago, and I know we had some discussion. Uh, Mrs. Brotherton had done some work on uh, honoring, uh, putting together a week of uh, recognition, which I think is a good, a great idea. It needs to be developed, obviously, but I do believe that we still should make efforts like we did tonight with uh, two uh, sports teams to recognize outstanding volunteers, and I think Mrs. Weagle certainly, under any definition, is an outstanding volunteer who's done a tremendous amount for the town and deserves to be acknowledged by this board. So it would be my wish that the board would uh, proceed to my request that she be given a proclamation at a future meeting and that her former board members be invited to, to attend as well. Well, we had a discussion at our last meeting and um, we had discussed that to send that to as a, a uh, to the uh, subcommittee for policy to uh, determine whether or not this was going to be, and so we were going to put that on hold uh, at our last meeting, and um, that was a discussion that ensued. So we were waiting to hear back from the subcommittee on that, if that's uh, acceptable to you. Um, I asked a year ago for something. We haven't gotten that, but we've gotten it from Mrs. Brotherton in, in draft form, so I shouldn't say that, so I apologize. That's kind of rude. Um, we hand out proclamations to business owners. We hand out proclamations to sports teams. I don't see the difference uh, with volunteers, especially people who over a long period of time, like Mrs. Weagle, has devoted across several boards uh, hours and hours of time. So for me, I don't want to wait for the subcommittee. Uh, I may be out of office by the time we, we decide whether we're going to acknowledge volunteers, whether it be individually. I think the idea of a week is great. I'd happily work with Mrs. Brotherton to uh, try and get some uh, definition to that, but I do stand by my request that uh, Mrs. Weagle get a proclamation. And until a policy is done, that we continue to follow the past practice of the board, which has been for members to request, and it's entirely up to the board whether they want to support that motion or they don't. Okay. Is that in the form of a motion? I would make a motion that we uh, honor Mrs. Weagle with a proclamation and uh, include an invitation to former board members that she served alongside uh, to attend. Second. Okay, is there any discussion? Mr. Simonian. I, the last time we talked about this, I, I made it clear that I was in favor. Um, Mr. Carpenter's absolutely correct when he says that you know we've kind of set a precedent you know, I've cautioned this board several times since I first joined it about setting precedents because this is exactly um, where you find yourself if you stop following the precedent you've set then um, you know it seems like you're selectively honoring people or selectively doing anything if you do it here do it there but don't do it um, at another time. Um, in this case, I mean, I, I don't want that to take away from the fact that I support it, and I think it's certainly merited and warranted. Um, so I, I fully support it um, because I think this is another case where it's someone who has um, given a lot of time, a lot of effort, I'm sure, at, you know, um, great personal sacrifice but has felt that, you know, it was important to do that, to serve the town. Um, and we should always be grateful um, for people who are willing to do that. So. Is there any other discussion? Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I'll just say, um, although it would be my preference to wait until we, um, at least had an opportunity to vote on the proposed policy. I had said at the meeting when it was first brought up that I would not vote against um, 
a request for a proclamation for Mrs. Weagle. Um, I will say that I have spoken with her regarding this item and she wanted to assure us that she has lots of volunteering left in her that this is not like, you know, an, an acknowledgement because she's no longer volunteering. And um, my concern, again, is that we have volunteers out there who, who have left who are no longer able for one reason or another to volunteer and I, I'm concerned about s missing them. And that's why, you know, Mrs. Brotherton and I had proposed the the policy in May, I believe it is, right? May, um, um, to just recognize all of our wonderful volunteers. But as I said in the past, um, this is a motion that was seconded, and I had said at the time I would not vote against it. Although my preference would have been to wait to recognize all at the same time. Okay, is there any other comments? Well, I. Um have a, I do agree with um, Mrs. Goodrich's comments, and I uh, I believe that uh, Mrs. Weagle has done enormous amounts of work and effort for her, you know, in her time here in town. And I do appreciate all her time, but I think with the proclamations, I think we've started to get to a point where we're handing out proclamations for a lot of different things, and I'm afraid that people would be missed. And I think, unfortunately, with Mrs. Weagle, uh, she would not be, uh, you know, uh, hurt or bothered by if she did not receive a proclamation. But that, my reasoning for that is I, the people in the past that have not gone recognized, um, I'm going to wait for a policy to come out so I can't support this motion. Is there any further discussion? Being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, can I have a vote of, okay. I'm sorry. All right, all right, that's all right. Uh, so, and I say no. So the vote is four to one. Thank you. Okay, are there any public comments for tonight? Yeah. Mr. Simonian. So I, I would have rather, have, it doesn't matter whether it's public comment, board of selectmen item. Um, so let me start out first by apologizing for my reaction to Mr. Holstrom earlier this evening. But uh, at the same time, I'm going to express my disappointment to the other members of this board. Um, it's really disheartening to sit here meeting after meeting and have you watch the way that Mr. Holstrom consistently treats me and doesn't do it to anyone else. Um, and this is not just an isolated incident. I have, on separate occasions, sent emails to Mr. Holstrom because he has contacted me via phone and become belligerent and menacing on the phone. I've asked him not to contact me on the phone because of that, because I have felt threatened. Um, and it just continues to carry over to the meeting. It's obvious since Mr. Holstrom came on the um, board, he doesn't like excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. I, Simonian. What you're here we discussing go. here tonight uh, is something that was came to me uh, email, and I had made discussions to you. And what you're saying is um, a little difficult for me to uh, absorb because of course it's difficult. Yes. It's difficult Will to you, hear the truth. Yes. Well, no, it wasn't. Because you started yelling at me on the phone Mr. because Simone, I we're missed not going to do this here in meeting tonight. Well, Thank you. The you public has a right to know. Listen, That's you fine. guys elected me the same as everyone else here. Every time he interrupts me and cuts me off, he's doing a disservice to you. He knows it. I know it. Every other board member knows it. And yet everyone remains silent on it. I don't care if Mr. Holstrom likes me or not. I didn't come up here. I didn't run for this seat to make friends with him. I came up here to serve you. That's what I've done for five years, and I'm not going to stop regardless of how much he hates me, doesn't like me, threatens me, I'm whatever sorry, it is. sorry, Mr. Simone, and I won't Thank take that, those night. comments anymore. Okay. Stop treating me that uh, we way. Have minutes. You don't have to. We have the minutes. Mr. Chairman, can I be heard before we move on to the next agenda? Excuse me, Mr. Cop. Can I be heard on yes, this? Yes, please. Um, I, I have spoken a couple times, probably more than a couple times, about this back and forth. And as a member, the reason I'll tell you why I'm silent is because there are three other members of this board, and the two of you can't seem to get along. 
is very frustrating and very difficult to sit here while the two of you go after each other. I don't know, nor do I have any interest in knowing why. I just want you both to stop going after each other, let each other finish their thought, because you don't. You both speak over each other, you're both doing this and that. So it's something that the two of you need to address together. It isn't a board issue, but board members shouldn't be attacking each other. You know, we really do need to remember that we are all here, we are all equal. Mr. Smoney is absolutely right, no one is above the other. And I understand that feelings can get hurt, but the other three members don't want to, and I'm not going to, I shouldn't say that. This member is going to get up and leave if this is going to continue, because I don't need um, this kind of argument. We're talking about the town. We're not talking about each other. We're talking about an issue. We don't have to agree, but we can be agreeable. So the two of you, my request to both of you is to stop talking over each other, stop interrupting, stop thinking that one is trying to get over on the other, and stop submitting us, the other board members, to, to having to listen to this, these, these dissertations that you both have. It's very uncomfortable, and it's, and it's not appropriate for a meeting. And I understand there's a lot of water under the dam that I'm not aware of, and, and I'm not asking to be. I'm just asking for you to consider that there are five members of the board, three of us are not participating in this kind of dialogue. We're the board of selectmen. We should be able to communicate with each other respectfully at all times, and we should be able to finish our sentences and our thoughts without being interrupted. So we all need to work on that, because I know I've certainly stepped on more than uh, uh, my fair share of other members speaking, so uh, I'm as guilty as anyone. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Mrs. Goodrich. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wasn't going to comment, but um, I think it's important enough to what I would ask fellow board members out of respect to the chairman that board members wait until they're recognized to speak just because you speak out without being recognized um, that too is in fact interrupting so i would ask that all members wait until till they're recognized to speak out and when they're finished confirm with the chairman that they're finished and he can move on to the next the next member but um speaking when you're not recognized um is actually interrupting the chairman so I would ask that the chairman just wait, that members wait to speak out until the chairman has recognized them. Thank you, Mrs. Goodrich. Is there anything else? Being none, we have minutes in front of us from February 10th, 2015. Are there any comments, corrections, submissions? If not, I'll accept them as presented. And now I'll entertain a motion for- Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye.